All right, welcome to machine training. We're going to cover both of our voting machines, the BMD as well as the scanner only machine. Um, in a lot of ways they function similarly, but the, uh, the setup and closing procedures are going to be a little bit more involved with the BMD and we'll go ahead and cover everything with them. Regardless of the machine, before you start out in the morning, you're going to need to find your pouch that's going to have the town, district, and pole site label that matches the label on the front of your machine and then go ahead and uncover our machine. For our BMD here, we have to remove these two pieces of foam. The one under the monitor, we're going to have to lift up by our metal arm here. This gets turned around to the back side of the machine. While it's tempting to try and pry the monitor out from the front, uh, this plastic monitor is actually kind of delicate. If you come around the side and grab by that metal arm, you can yank on it as hard as you want and you won't be able to hurt anything. So that's the best way to get that up. This piece of foam lifts straight off the top. And our back piece of foam, we just slide off the back here. Now inside of our pouch here, we've got our seal report sheet. On election day, this first column here is going to have numbers written in it that match to our corresponding seals around the machine. We want to go ahead and make sure all those seals match up. Our cable locks are going to be on there. Uh, verify that everything matches. Check those boxes. We have room on the bottom for one from each party to sign. And the seals that we need to break in order to set up our machine have a spot where we're going to put them on the back side of our sheet. So my seal number one here on this ballot box door will come off and it's got a labeled spot on the back side of the sheet. We're going to go ahead and place it. On the back side of the machine we've got a port where we're going to plug in our handicapped uh, voting device back here. We're going to take that off. That goes on the second box, again labeled. Also in our pouch we're going to have our security key eye button lanyard combination. We're going to use that to get into our ballot box door. where we're going to have uh, all of our machine inventory that we're going to need to remove in order to get set up for the day. Uh, all of our voting machines are going to have an extension cord in them. With the BMD you're always going to have to use that extension cord. These have a very short cord on them and these are set up in a way that we need to have somebody come around the back side of the machine and set up uh, their wheelchair or crutches or walker, whatever the case may be, in order to uh, create their ballot back here. And with that short cord, there's no way we could facilitate that. So um, always going to use the extension cord on the BMD. I'm going to go ahead and plug the machine in. And because this BMD takes a while to boot up, I'm going to go ahead and power it up right now. And then we can kind of use the booting time um, to our advantage, get the rest of it set up so we're not actually waiting on the machine. So this gets powered up by our little uh, battery pack in the bottom of the machine. Uh, the bottom button with a circle and a line through it, we're going to hold for about a quarter of a second and then release. That's going to fire up the back side of the machine. You'll hear a little chirp, you'll see these lights come on, and our LCD panel will pop up. So we know that it's beginning its booting process, we can go ahead and unload the rest of the equipment going to be a Ziploc bag that's going to contain our ATI, ATI cable and headphones. That's what our handicapped voter uses to navigate the back side of the machine. We can set that on the back deck. There's also going to be a bunch of stuff that needs to go to your table. This black box is what we call our sip and puff. Uh, very rarely used but we have it just in case. That would allow uh, somebody that didn't have use of their hands uh, the ability to create their ballot. Essentially if you can breathe, you can vote, um, it turns the various steps in the uh, voting process into yes or no questions that you can answer by merely sipping or puffing. Uh, so we want to bring that to our desk if we ever needed that. There's going to be a manila envelope filled with blank ballot stock. Again that's uh, part of the handicap voting process and store, instead of being issued a typical ballot like your, your regular voter they'll actually start out with a blank sheet of paper and create their own ballot. We'll go through that process in a bit. You're also going to have the privacy sleeves. These are issued to every voter. Whether they want to use it or not is up to them, but we have to um, do our best to make sure we put their ballot inside of this and hand it to them to ensure them privacy. Um, and if they don't want to use it and they put it back on the desk, that's fine, but you have to make a, an effort to give that to them. Um, and these three items 
all go onto our table where we're working on, on that election day. Um, these two other panels here are to ensure our voters uh, privacy while they're working on the machine. This box shaped one starts off on the top of the monitor and then just slides down. Um, while they're creating their ballot, basically the picture of their ballot as well as their votes will be on the screen. So we want to make sure that that goes in place. This other panel kind of just sits over the top of the front of the machine here and tucks in on the side and it just sits like that. All right. One more thing to do as far as setting this up, we'll be plugging in that ATI. So our blue cable here has a jack on the end similar to an old phone quarter. It's a Cat5 cable. This gets plugged into that jack. And on the bottom of it we have two ports. One is labeled Sip and Puff, one is labeled Audio. For our purposes we're just going to go ahead and hit the audio into the audio jack and let that sit on the back side of the machine. So my machine is now beeping at me. It's ready for the next stage of the uh, opening process. Before we close up our ballot box door, we want to make sure we've gotten everything out of this voting machine. Even if you know you're never going to use the sip and puff or whatever, always take all of your machine inventory out, especially in this writing compartment. If anything is in here and somebody casts a ballot and it touches that, it will give you paper jams all day. So no matter what, remove all of your machine inventory. And then you can go ahead and lock up your ballot box and make sure you keep track of your I button key lanyard combination you'll need that at the end of the night so real quick before we go up and uh, finish our opening procedure we'll cover our scanner only machine again very similar steps just easier you're going to want to find that pouch that contains your seal sheet your key i button lanyard go ahead and pull the cover off this machine's real easy to set up. The privacy panels are built right into this. You break this little Velcro seal here. The panels pop down, set in place. Again, you, you would work through your seal sheet the same as you would on the other machine. There's also going to be much less uh, machine inventory on this. Uh, again, you'd have your seal on the back of your seal sheet. We're going to give you an extension cord. You may or may not need that with a scanner only machine. Um, nobody needs to get along the back side of the mach this machine. It can be butted up against the wall and they actually put a decently long cord on them. So that's a situational use. If you need the extension cord, you got it. Um, if not, you can set it aside. Um, and again, we have our privacy sleeves. We're going to issue to each voter with our ballot. This machine does not have a separate battery pack you have to power up. Once you've got your machine inventory out, you can simply plug this machine in and it will begin its booting up process. So again, very similar but just simpler. Um, the next step we do as far as opening the polls and getting ready for election is going to operate in the same fashion. The button pushing procedures will be the same. So we'll go ahead and work off our machine we've got running here. I'm going to pull this panel off just so we can kind of let you see what's going on. The first thing that happens here is we're brought to a screen that says insert security key to authenticate the election files. So that's going to be our I button. We set it down here. We want to keep it held flat. Sometimes it takes a second or two. Um, you just want to avoid lifting it on and off. Just keep it held down and it will bring us to the next stage. Um, it only looks for this I button every second or two. It's not necessarily always there. So if you lift it on and off, it can give you issues. You just want to keep it held down uh, firmly there and it'll be brought to the next step. Um, we have to enter our password right now, which is one through eight. So we'll go ahead and hit those buttons. If you see a number light up that is not the number that you wanted to hit, you can hit this clear button. It will back up and you can hit the correct number. So we're going to do one through eight and then hit enter. Oh, and I had the wrong one in my hand, so we're going to try that password again.
All right, our security key is verified and it's going to begin booting up some more. And the next thing that will happen will be bring us to a uh, clock, uh, our time confirmation screen. Uh, the time should be set correctly. If it's plus or minus a minute or two, that's no big deal. You can just roll with it. If the time that's displayed is way off, you're going to want to correct the time. So unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to just simply enter the correct time. Um, if you hit no, the time is not correct. It will show you the year with a plus or a minus button. You go plus or minus to get to the correct year. It'll show you the month with a plus or a minus button to get to the correct month. It'll go on to the hours and the minutes. So you, you want to make sure that the clock is right. If you have any issues at this point, you can go ahead and call the Board of Elections. We can talk you through it. But again, it should be right. And if it's only a minute or two off, you don't have to worry about it. But if it's drastically off by hours, days, years, anything like that, we need to correct the time. So if the time is not correct, we would hit no and then correct it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. The time is correct and it will continue the rest of its booting process. On the scanner only machine, you're going to have those same two steps. You're going to take your I button on your security key, enter your password of 1 through 8, confirm your date and time, and then it will begin its final uh, loading procedure. One small difference during this process is that on a loading screen, your BMD will have a next button that pops up for a second. You don't want to hit that. That next button would allow the machine to skip loading our handicapped data it would make the machine load up faster but unfortunately we wouldn't be able to uh, take care of our handicapped voters so when a next button is popping up on that loading screen we do not want to hit it you won't see that button pop up on the scanner because it does not have that uh, added functionality on the back side of the machine so after we've gone through that menu we're brought to our main menu where we're going to hit the open poll button it then asks us what kind of report we want to print for our purposes, we have to print a zero report. It's going to basically let us know that all of the contests um, on our ballot have no votes in them, that no ballots have been cast, and we're starting off at zero. If ever your zero report does not reflect all zeros as far as votes in different contests and ballots cast, you'd have to call the Board of Elections and we'll have to talk you through resetting the machine. Um, before these machines are put out, they're basically run through a pretend election to verify their accuracy and all that. So very rarely you could come upon um, votes cast on the machine that's not anything malicious or anything like that. Just occasionally, no matter how many times we try and, try and double check everybody, something slips through the cracks. Um, so this is a very important part of the process, making sure that our zero report is indeed all zeros. And again, if it's not, go ahead and call the board and we'll guide you through that process. It's really quick, um, but very important. Uh, so at the uh, bottom of our sheet here, we have spots for people to sign. We want to verify that at least one from each party has seen that the machine was starting off at zero. And we go ahead and rip that off. Whenever the machine generates reports, it's going to ask if we want more copies or not. We're going to go ahead and hit no. We do not need more copies. After that happens, our LCD panel goes to system ready, and at that point the machine is completely set up and ready to process your first voter's ballots. So, real quick, we're going to cover things that you might have to deal with during the election. Um, how to help a handicapped voter, what could happen if we had a power outage or some kind of issue with the machine, and First thing we'll start off with is if we have any issues with the machine, whether the power goes out and the batteries die or our machine stops the ability to cast ballots. Um, if it's ever giving you any issues with processing voter traffic, you want to immediately call the Board of Elections and we'll figure out a way to either fix, replace, or take care of your machine. But in the meantime, we cannot stop the flow of voter traffic, so we have this emergency ballot box on the front side of our machine. The same key that we use to open and close our ballot box door, we insert into the front of the machine. You turn it and the emergency ballot box will now be able to open. It'll come down and hit a metal detent. You can lock it back up and we now have a spot where the voters can just drop their ballots into this box. Um, after your machine has been fixed or replaced, we want to make sure that those ballots get cast into the machine. And just real quick, I want to illustrate that this is its own separate and unique uh, compartment. 
ballots inside the emergency ballot box would be the only ballots that you would recast in the machine. Um, I'm just going to open this up real quick and show you that it is separate from the writing compartment. So in told, you have your main ballot box, your write-in ballot section, and then the emergency ballot box, all three separate entities. I'm going to go ahead and close that back up. Oh, that's another thing. If you if you do need to take the ballots out, if you're looking straight down on top of this emergency ballot box, there's two slits cut in it. If you depress right where those two slits are cut, you'll be able to open it up. And again, as you can see, this is its own separate box. All right, so we'll go over the procedures for a handicapped voter. They're going to be issued a blank sheet of paper out of our manila envelope that we brought to our table. You're also going to give them one of the privacy sleeves as you would any other voter. While it's not so important, while this is a blank sheet of paper, when they're done with the process, it'll be a fully voted ballot that has to be cast in the front of the of the machine just as any other ballot would be. So in order to start that process we're going to use our I button on the security key receptacle again. It's going to bring up a main menu that looks a little bit different than it did in the morning. It's going to have a couple more buttons and the one right in the middle is the one we need. It's labeled accessible voting. We're going to go ahead and hit that in order to activate the back side of the machine. It's going to ask us one of two questions next. Um, if you're in a general election where everybody has the same ballot, it's going to ask you to confirm a ballot ID number. Um, all of our ballots have ID numbers in the bottom corner. Um, like I said, if it's a general, it's just asking you to confirm it. Do you want to start with ballot ID? Whatever the number may be, you can verify that it is that number and go ahead and hit yes. This will go back to system ready and it's able to process our regular voter traffic and the back side of the machine turns on. Um, if you're in a primary scenario, instead of just asking you to confirm that ballot ID number, we need to get the correct ballot for our particular voter. So if they were, let's say, a uh, Democrat in X district, you'd look at whatever ballot they would have been issued and you'd have to enter that ballot ID number. So if you had a handicapped voter come in and need the Democratic ballot, you'd look at that ballot ID number enter that it would create the ballot for them. Let's say your next voter comes in and they needed the Republican handicap ballot, you would look at what ballot they would have been issued, enter that number and bring up the correct ballot for them. So once you've done that step, like I said, this goes back to your regular voter traffic and the back side of the machine is now live. We'll go ahead and turn this around. And I'll pop this off just so you can see it a little bit better here. But this is now how we're going to navigate through the system here. This is not a touch screen. All of these uh, pictures kind of correspond with what buttons we're going to hit on this machine. Before we leave our voter back here to create their ballot, we have to take one of those sheets of blank paper and insert it into the back of the machine. And now essentially they're on their own unless they ask for help. If they do ask for help, you have to have one from each party help them through this process. All right, so um, if they needed to use the sip and puff, that would get plugged in here. They would know that they needed to use the sip and puff and it would start tailoring the device to them. This middle option of paddles we don't actually use. Uh, pr primarily, it's always this, the ATI device. So we're going to use that. In order to use that, this little yellow arrow here is indicating that's what we'd hit in order to use the ATI. The next couple of uh, questions are going to tailor it to our particular individual. If they are blind, they could turn the screen off. Uh, we're going to leave the screen on by hitting red X. Um, they can turn the audio on or off. Obviously, if they're deaf, they wouldn't need the audio. If you know, it tailors it to them. So whatever they needed to do, um, actually going to turn the audio off by hitting blue down, just so it operates a little faster. The next couple of screens are additional instructions. I'm going to skip those additional instructions by hitting yellow over. And we can go back and get the instructions if we wanted them or begin voting by blue down. I'll hit blue down. 
it's going to load up a picture of the ballot in its entirety and then it will zoom in on contest one and give us a little uh, box that's kind of like our cursor. So this yellow box here is where we um, would make our selections. We can go up, down, left, right and make our selections by hitting X. That blanks out the contest. It won't let you overvote. Um, this machine lets you vote correctly, so it, it kind of makes the process as easy as it could be. When you get to the edge of the ballot, you would continue to advance it by holding that arrow once again to load the back side. That could be one area where they might need help. They might have a question for you. So the premise is it just keeps working by pushing the yellow arrow over uh, to pull up the back. And again, on the back side of the ballot, hitting the yellow arrow over would advance it. So at this point they can review their ballot or print it. We're going to go ahead and print it. And it takes a minute or two but essentially uh, that blank piece of paper is going to come out and look like a normal uh, voted ballot. They can then take that ballot, put it into their privacy sleeve and then they would come around and cast it in the front of the machine just as any other ballot would be cast. Um, if it's a double-sided ballot, the ballot's going to come out a little ways and then get sucked back into the machine um, in order to print the back side. So you could let them know that when the ballot is done printing, it'll hang out and you will know it is done. It hangs out pretty much as far as it can. Uh, when it comes out just a little bit, it's going to be pulled in to print the back side of the uh, ballot. One other thing that I want to cover uh, might not necessarily happen during the day. But it's kind of our, our main uh, trouble with these machines, um, a thermal printer error. I don't know if you can get the camera right in there. Um, sometimes if you take this paper and instead of using the cutting uh, portion of this, you yank on it. Later on in the night when you go to print a report, you could get a thermal printer error. Sometimes just bouncing around in the moving trucks, delivering the machines. You can encounter a thermal printer error in the morning. Um, it's probably our most common issue and it's really um, easy to fix, but it's kind of hard to describe if you've never seen it before. So we'll see if we can show you right here. The thermal printer area is right under this. In order to open that, we have a little tab we push forward and that pops open. Um, even if this looks like it's correct, it could still give you issues just because something could be loose. So inside of this, we've got a little blue button that releases this little pressure bar and in order to have this set up right we take our paper roll with our paper coming off the bottom of the roll lay it in the machine and this pressure bar sits on top of that thermal tape printer and clicks down in place it can only fit in one way so um, if it doesn't click down in place you have it the wrong way there's a gear on one side and there's only a hole for that gear on that one side so if you have it the wrong way or whatever, it will never work. Um, you've got it set up correctly. It clicks down in place. You feed your paper up through. And pull your paper forward to break it. And that will solve uh, the issue of it popping up later. You don't ever want to yank on that because that pressure bar, once it pops out of place, will give you a thermal printer error. And there's our printed ballot out of the back side of the machine, front and back. And that's pretty much as exciting as it's going to get during the election. Um, so those are the uh, three different scenarios that you might have to work through. Um, but right now we can pretty much pretend it's the end of the night and we go ahead and uh, close up our machine. So again we need to use our I button, our security key receptacle to bring up the main menu. Um, if we happen to have an emergency that day and we had to use our emergency ballot box, we want to open that up, make sure that that box is empty before we close the polls, make sure all of our ballots that needed to be cast are cast, and then we can go and hit our close poll button. It's going to ask if we're certain. Yes, we're certain. And it's going to begin printing a report that looks a lot like our zero report, except um, they won't be zeros. It'll show how many ballots were cast and all of the votes. And 
I'll see if you can zoom right in there. We have a thermal tape printer error. I must not have clicked it back down in place. This is what the screen will look like. So you'd want to pull that paper down. Click your pressure bar back into place. Feed it up through and then hit our resume button. Man, I couldn't have done that if I tried. Uh, again, it's going to ask if we want more copies of our reports. Generally, you're going to hit, hit no. Um, if by chance you had some press or newspaper, somebody wanted a copy of the results tape, you could print an additional copy for them. But at the end of the night, that has to become the possession of the board. You cannot leave that with them. Um, so again, there's room on the bottom of this. You'd have at least one from each party signing it. This is our zero tape from the morning, um, as well as our card once we pull that out. So after it's printed our report, we're simply going to hit the power down button. It's going to ask if we're certain we want to power it down. We're going to go ahead and hit yes. Alright, and once those screens have gone blank, we want to open up our ballot box. And go ahead and turn off our battery pack. We then want to unplug our machine. Now if you had incorrectly powered the machine down, if you had left the battery pack on, um, the machine would now chirp at you to let you know. So it's good to just do the shutdown procedure just in that order. Powering down the machine, confirming that, hitting your battery pack, and then unplugging it. Um, and it, if I said, uh, if it's running off the battery pack, it'll beep and let you know. Um, if everything's quiet and off, everything was done correctly. All of the machine inventory that came in the machine goes back in. Um, those ballot bags will not go back into the machine. But one more thing that we need um, is to cut the cable lock off of our poll worker card. And that is a very important part of this process. We want to make sure the machine is shut down correctly before we go ahead and pull this out. We'll cut that cable lock. There is detailed instructions on this particular seal to let you know what you need to do. But this panel opens up by pushing this tab in folding that down. There's a little peg next to our card. We push that peg in and the card comes out. If the card's sort of stuck on there, you can put your fingers on top of it and pull it out. This is going to go into the red pouch that has the rest of our election data, our zero report, and our uh, results tape at the end of the night. That's a very important step of this process. If at any point there's something that happens, you yank the card out at the wrong time or you fail the sequence of events in any way, contact us and we'll talk you through whatever process we need to to resolve um, any potential issues with that. Um, and then we're just going to basically pack everything back up into the machine. Um, you don't really need to watch me do that. It's, just, it's the same thing just backwards as far as what we did in the morning. On our scanner only machine, uh, the only real difference is going to be that once we've powered down our machine and confirmed yes we do want to power down, there's no extra battery button to hit so you're going to simply unplug the machine and then you'll be safe to cut your card, follow your instructions, um, pull out your card and put that with your zero tape, your closing tape, put that in the red pouch um, that contains all of our election data. And again, if there's any issues with any of those things, the zero report, the closing tape, or pulling the card, we need you to contact the board just so that we can um, have the information that we need. And uh, we'll have the simplest way, you know, if anything gets messed up, we'll have a simple way forward uh, to get the information we need. Uh, and that's about it. We just go ahead and pack up our machines, throw our covers back on them, and call it a night. Thank you. Take care.